So you want to have a perfect start in Daisy, but you suck. Well, it turns out I used to suck too, but I don't suck anymore. 6,000 hours of learning. Here we go. So you've spawned in. First thing, where's the coast? We need to put our side to it and run to the nearest town that we can find. If I didn't see one, I'm just running, right? I'm just, I'm just going. But in this particular case, there's a town right here. Now, all these houses right here, fixing to be no good. To... So instead of looting the first houses we see, we are going to distance ourselves from the coastline. Right here, I am distancing myself from the coastline. And then I'm going to loot the first set of buildings offset from the coastline. What I mean is like they're detached. The human brain is funny. We work in patterns without even realizing it. I think it's human instinct to be drawn to all these buildings right here because they're tall and attractive and it looks like they got lots of windows. Lots of people live there. But ultimately what you want to do is you want to divide yourself like by something like a road, for example. And you want to get on the opposite side of it from the coastline. And then we're going to loot these houses here. Now, our previous guides have been showing in detail how to navigate food how to navigate water. We will briefly talk about those things here, but this one is going to be focused on how to keep ourselves alive versus other players. A lot of us, while we are playing, the thing that gets us is not the food or the water. It's the first person we see. The first thing I want you to know is that your voice is probably your greatest tool versus other players for the swag. So when you get an opportunity to see other players, it's important that if you are on a even playing field and they've already identified you to use your comms, to use your microphone. It can it has saved me hundreds of times just saying hello to someone, just acting human to someone, because as you can imagine, people in this world. Oh, geez, someone made armbands here. So someone's already been here. It's evidence of someone else. Armbands don't just spawn in five like that. But what, what, I, what I want you to focus on is making sure that you control those interactions by being the first person to sort of start the dialogue. We're going to keep cruising here. Now, when I'm talking about... One sec. I just want to pause and tell you why I do this. If you get headaches while you're playing, adjust the field of view to either be more zoomed out or more zoomed in. Try it out. Now, when I'm talking about playing DayZ for surviving players, the number one thing I'm talking about is finding a police station. It is the thing to do at the beginning of the game here. And it is what all... Here, I'm also going to show you a trick. Yeah. It is the thing we should always focus on. Now, I know the police station isn't going to be in the heart of most towns. It's going to be centralized. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push towards the middle of the town here loot some buildings on the way. I'm not too worried about these zombies because I have all these doors to clo close them in. I found another piece of food. Something I also want to point out for new players because we had a community member join the Discord and I just saw him in there playing and I joined up and he's a brand new player, less than 10 hours I want to say. And I watched him play and I, I think I got a lot of insights into the struggles of a new player. So I'm going to be working on a series. If you're a new player and you want me to like coach you for an hour of like you running on the coastline, let me know. Uh, I would really like to also capture it and share it with the community. I think that could be a really cool thing. But something I want. Ooh. Something I noticed with, with that new player that was in our Discord and I was watching. The time that he spent in houses was very great. And what I mean by that is I know where all of the items spawn. Ooh, nice. That's a good find. I know where all of the items spawn in general. So when I go into this building, I'm looking on this desk and I'm looking in the middle right there on the table and on the ground. And then I'm looking right there and I'm looking on the table. And I'm looking on top of that. And I'm looking. So I know where all of the spawn locations are. So what does that mean? I don't have to spend a lot of time in the building. But ultimately, you guys are going to be new players. You're going to be starting off. This is quite a hard... I'll help you with this. Kind of too. You guys are going to be starting off. It's going to take you a little bit longer to get through each building. But what I want you to ask yourself is when I go to this next building here, is how long would you have spent in there versus how long did I spend in here? Right, I'm going into this building here. 
check the red jacket. Oh, that looks sick. I want that. We go over here. We got some salty sticks. Nothing. We're out. Now, my friend, when I was watching him, our community member, he was looking through everything, obviously. Because he's not sure about the spawns. And that's okay. It's going to take you time to learn it. You're not supposed to be super lightning fast right away. But something that I want you to process is how long have I taken? Is it as short as possible? Because the longer we spend in each house, that's why that, I think that's at the core as to why my friend kept dying to starvation. The longer we spend in each house, the harder it's going to be for us. All right, it looks like we have zombie aggro over here. So there's probably a player in here. Looks like multiple zombies aggroing on him. And I know that the police station is right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip this. Because my first goal is to make sure that I am safe. And if I do not have body armor on, I am not safe. So I'm going to go to this PD, which is right over here. And I'm going to see if I could find a little police vest. The main place I'm going to find them, oh god, is on a zombie. So there may be someone here with a gun. It would be in this moment right now, it would not be a terrible decision to just get out of dodge and leave. We just heard a gunshot. But I'm going to go ahead and run through here really quick. See if I could spy with my eye a zombie with the vest. I can't so far. All right, no vest. We got to get out of here. We're gone. Nope, she doesn't have a vest either. I mean, it's important when you hear gunshots in the beginning towns especially that you make sure your footprint is really small after that. So I didn't kill any zombies there. I tried to stay undetected by them. I tried to stay low profile. Over here, I'm a couple blocks away from where I think the shot was. So I should be okay. We'll find out soon. Huh? That zombie had human meat in their pocket. Never know what you're going to get. So I've looted through the town and found relatively very little as far as defending myself. I didn't find armor, which is terrible. Uh, normally, you would want to find it in the PD. I didn't want to sit around the PD too long because someone is shooting, right? But what I'm going to focus on is separating myself from this area so I could get into a location where I'm ahead of that person. The person behind me is going to be looting all the same as me going to be looking for guns, looking for armor, looking for weapons, looking for food. And I want to make sure, especially because I know they are here, I want to make sure that I am ahead of that. And look at this. I went into this military building here, this checkpoint. Found some 5.56 and a Glock. Now, I may not be able to use the 5.56 for a long time unless I find a, probably a pioneer, but it is a step in the direction of protecting myself. So, this is going to be a cool little lesson with the zombies here. Zombies struggle with corners and stuff like that. So you can play it against them. Check this guy out. He has to come back down. Right? I can play it against them. I can play that they can't jump off a little tiny ledge like that. I can... Hello? How you doing? Are you okay? Do you need help? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay, my friend? Do you need help? So, this person attacked me. I was in a really bad spot there. I just closed myself in the door. Let them deal with the zombies. And then I'm just... I'm just gonna run out of there. Are you okay? Uh, my friend, are you okay? You don't you don't have to be the best PvP -er, guys. All you really gotta do is just let the zombies aggro on someone else, okay? I'm just gonna see what happens here. Hey, are you okay? Are you alright? 
Are you okay? I'm running out of stamina. <laughs> Close myself in the door. Are you okay? Are you alright there? Are you okay? I'm gonna <laughs> revive him really quick. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I wanted to focus on what I was doing. Uh, hello? Hello, are you okay? Oh, looks like you're okay. Oh, wakey wakey. How are you doing? Are you okay? Alright, she's dead now. Alright, so I got a bunch of zombies on me. This could be an important time for a lesson, too. Alright? So, I got a bunch of zombies on me, and I don't really have anything to fight them with. First off, I'm going to get hydrated here. I don't have anything to fight them with. Now, a lot of people will say jump on a, a car, which I will show you a little bit later when we get out of this situation. But something else we could do. Notice how I'm in this corner here. All the zombies are drawing to this corner right now as we speak. I could, I could even hit the corner, draw them even more. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm giving myself time to peek out and loot that person. Watch. And now I'm going to put them back in the corner. And now all the zombies are going to aggro behind me. And now I'm going to use the same technique that I just showed you for that body. And I'm going to use it to obstruct the zombies out of here. So I'm going to run across and I'm going to close that door there. Uh, I don't know. I'll show you. But I'm going to... All the zombies are behind me. I'm giving myself two seconds. And in this small garage, it's not going to make a huge difference. It's a small limit. But watch this. I'm going to obstruct their movement again. I'm obstructing their movement. They got to go somewhere else. Unfortunately, there's a gap two inches away. And now I put a gap in between me and the zombies in such a way that I've lost aggro of a bunch of them. Another way that we can beat zombies pretty handily is finding a building that has a window such as this. We can get in a window and exactly the same as before, I can stand in the corner and draw them to the window and just pluck away. Okay. Now the problem with this is very similar to being on top of a, a, a car. Let me find anything I could jump on here. Maybe right here. Now I want you to imagine there are other players that are, are within range to shoot me. If I'm up on top of the shirt, they can't hit me, right? If I'm in the right spot. They can't hit me, but I'm sitting still. Oh, yes they can. Okay, well that's, I'm trying to find a car. Let me find a car so I could use the actual example that I'm thinking. Cars work really well for this. That's why I'm trying to... <laughs> that was a bad... Let me fast forward time for you guys here. Okay. Now I'm on top of a car. I can't be hit by the zombies. It's kind of cheesing them, right? Like they can't hit me. And I could fight them infinitely. There could be literally a thousand zombies here and I could survive them like this. When things do get dire, maybe you have to jump on a car. But something that jumping on a car doesn't do for you is it doesn't help you get better at dealing with zombies. So ultimately when there isn't a car around, you're not gonna know what to do. And on top of that, it you're sitting on top of a car, dude. You're gonna get shot. And people are like, oh, why do you never get shot? It's because I'm not sitting on top of a car. If I was a sniper and I was up on that hill and I was looking at you and I'm fighting zombies like this, maybe uh. staggering them and running and staggering them and running. That sniper's gotta aim. Ah, ah, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. Oh, now I'm aiming. Oh, he's moving, he's moving, right? But if I'm on top of this car, what's happening? Why jump on there when you can fight him fair and square? Oh, that's why I see. Okay. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so when you're fighting zombies, you can you can use buildings and you can use cars to sort of cheese them in their mechanics but something that i would recommend is if you ever have a one-on-one -on -one, oh whoops if you ever do have a one-on-one -on -one or a 2v2 or a 2v1 sorry try and try and fight it particularly 1v1s when you start try and always engage with the zombies and see what see what they have to offer you because ultimately you're gonna have to fight them sooner or later 
And if you get comfortable with it now, the struggle later is going to be way less. Now, I am on a road that's heading away from the main of the town, and I am going inland. I actually already recorded this video, guys. But then, my mic didn't record. And I was devastated. So I'm trying to touch on all the things that I talked on that run. Because that run was literally flawless for everything that I wanted to explain. Um, but in this run, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to focus right now on getting this out. Look at We're on someone's tail here. Someone's just been here not so long ago. Alright, something that happened in the previous video that I really want to touch on here is... When people get into the woods and they don't have any road nearby, how to navigate that. So we're gonna we're gonna go up in this tree line here and we're gonna talk about a couple different things in relation to that. First off, when I'm walking through this field, I'm walking to that tree line, I have an image as to where my object is. I'm going that way. I'm going into those trees there. Now when I'm in the trees, it's harder to to see the thing I'm walking towards. Like right now, for example, I'm walking towards this middle tree shining bright like a diamond. I'm headed towards it. And I, I can see that pathway existing in front of me. Now, when we get into the dense, dense forest, it's a lot harder to, to picture that thing that's out there. So what I mean by that is I'm in here and I'm walking. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna go around this tree. And I'm going to slightly change the angle of my mouse all the time. I'm going to go around this tree, too. And then I go around this tree. And then I go around this tree. And then I go around... You see what I'm saying? And what happens is you start going around so many trees, you subconsciously misdirect yourself. And then you spend three times as much time because you're circling. You're circling. And maybe, ultimately, in the worst way, you circle all the way back to where you started. Okay? So here is my... Here is my remedy for that. You're in the trees. You don't know where a road is. Pick a direction, whatever direction you want. You can always use the sun. It sets in the west and it rises in the east, okay? So you can use the sun if you would like. But if you are in the forest, let go of your mouse. The thing is, our mouse is what's changing the direction. So instead of that, if you're in the dense forest, just use WASND. You can walk around trees. You can navigate like this. You can scoop, 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 left and right, left and right. And ultimately, your direction won't change. Maybe your, uh, your, like, your X axis, you'll go left and right through the thing, through the forest, but you're not going to change your overall W key direction. So something that I recommend, maybe not let go of the mouse, but really you maybe use free look for it. Look around like this for a little bit if you're looking out for people. With, which is alt on PC. I'm not sure what it is on console and use that as a sort of guiding principle for keeping your head going the right direction because ultimately what happens is we run circles after making small adjustments. We don't process that. I just turned right a little bit. We don't process that. I just turned right. We don't process that. I just turned to get around this one. You're moving WASND as well and you're looking left and right and you're looking up the hill and you're looking up and you get lost in the forest. That is not the play. We need to instead let go of our mouse, let our W key or our headstrong joystick lead us onward and use the other directions. All right. Now, another thing people call me out on. You can find food in the jungle if other players have been where you are within a certain radius and you will find these little mushrooms on the ground. In the previous video, I was starving apparently, and I missed a mushroom on the ground, and someone chewed me out in the comments. And I'm just gonna say, I'm sorry, forgive me. I am only human. But you will find these mushrooms, and if they are dried, it doesn't matter if they're badly damaged or pristine condition. If they are dried out, you can eat them, or if they are not dried out, you can eat them. What you cannot eat is when they are rotten. People are saying you can nibble on rotten food. You probably can. A lot of people are saying that if a food is rotten, you can nibble on it very slowly. Don't do it, guys. Don't listen to these people. I don't care what they say. Go find yourself some food using all the principles that I'm teaching you here. I see a road here. So using my WAS and D keys, I got out of that and I see a road. I wonder if it leads to a town. I'm going to kind of keep that general direction in my mind. 
Oh, found a map. Beautiful day. I could show you guys how the maps work. Also, I should show you about this watchtower here. So this watchtower in Daisy, not the not the shorter one, but the tallest one, you can actually get down it really fast if you hold walk and you go down the ladder. No fall damage. Just hold walk and go down the ladder. It only works for this particular watchtower, so don't use the other one. But sometimes, let's say there's someone down there with knives and stuff, and they walk away thinking they're cool. You can just bloop, get down there and, ah, don't stab me, mister. So we're going to follow this road here. Another thing that I didn't talk about in any of the other videos, and I think it is important after watching, especially after watching our buddy loot through the town, uh, just because it does take newer players longer to find the food in the buildings. Even if they're in the right building, it takes them longer. So... We're talking nickel and dimes. We're trying to get every little bit of betterment out of our character. Insulation matters. See how it says best insulation? This jacket is a poggers. It's very good. What, what happens is if my character has really good insulation and my temperature is white here, which the elevation also determines the temperature. So I'm not very high right now. The coast is right there. Not too elevated right now. So it's not too cold here, right? But in general, I want to have good insulation on because the better my insulation, the less food my character is going to require and the less chance I have of getting cold and sick, ultimately. So the swag matters to you if it matters to you. It's up to you is what I'm getting at here. But ultimately, what you want to focus on is you want to focus on getting clothes if you're talking about like supreme like the the overall goal to survive you want clothes that match your environment that provide good insulation good insulation is high or best we want high insulation or best insulation medium insulation is good too medium insulation is better than low if i was on low I'd, it would suck right now i'd be sucking up a couple more nutrients than i am right now looks like we found a town using our little little road there that we spotted Oh my goodness, I thought that zombie was another crazy person that wouldn't talk to me, but would try and attack me. I wonder if that person in the town is brand new and everyone's been betraying him. And then I come along and they're like, nah, this person's trying to talk to me. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I draw the line at Tony. Tony betrayed me. I, I don't want to fight all these zombies, so I'm just going to grab them both. I'm bringing them in here. Oh, it sounds like there's more than two. Oh, did I open? Whoops. So I'm sort of ring around the rosy here. Just letting them all draw in here. So long as I stay on the outside. Oh, there's oh, I'm out of block. Oh, I'm out of stamp. Okay. There we go. We got five in there. I just got to fight this one. We're in a lot better shape here. Oh, what the hell? Is the back door open? I hope the back door is not open. <laughs> oh, back door was open. Oh, no. <laughs> Dude, they're all dressed the same. They're all twinsies. <laughs> Back door's not open. What the hell's going on? <laughs> Must be bugged. Something's going on. <laughs> well, look what I'm doing. I'm obstructing their movements, see? Same thing that we talked about earlier. I'm doing it subconsciously without really thinking about it. But jumping over little tiny things that changes their pathway. Alright, so let's say you didn't want to fight these zombies and you didn't want to lock them out. What did we do? I talked about this in the very first one. Lay prone. Just wait. I'm not in vision of any of them. I should be good. I'm going to eat my food. Relax. Let them sort of think about uh, why they all wore the same clothes. What their mother thought about their braids or something. Oh. Look at this. They're already kind of dissipating from the area. So something that happens quite often is players too early will go and open the door. And because their aggro is like... Not all the way on me, but kind of fresh on me. If I open that door right now, they would come right back to me. We have to wait. How long you think about waiting? We have to wait that long and then a little bit longer. All right, this is a reminder. If you find a plastic water bottle and there's water in it, empty that. That is poisoned water. That will kill you. You will die if you drink that. Crouching is an incredibly powerful way to avoid the zombies. That guy's going to see me probably, but it's all good. Nope, didn't even see me. 
Now, the first thing that we're always looking for is a knife, which is something I am still lacking. But I'm trying to trying to teach you a bunch of things. We kind of went over all those basic principles in the previous videos. I'm hoping to use this one as a sort of springboard for the next one we have coming out, which is going to be how to have a good mid-game, what to do after leaving the coast sort of situation. Now, I am looking for armor everywhere I go, obviously. It is the dream to have a little bit of armor here. But ultimately, finding armor in civilian buildings is where you will find the tier 2 armor, which is the press vest. But it is on, like, a sort of random drop. It's not... There's no location that you can go in vanilla that is... Oh, there we go. We found one there. That is going to be specifically going to give you... Uh, press best. It's it's a very luck of the draw sort of situation. Alright, let's also talk about this. Yeah, this is good. So, when we fight zombies, we always want to make sure that we are elevated above them. What I mean by that is I want to be punching down on them. I don't want to be punching up, ultimately, because we want to punch right above their head. All right, I want you to picture where I'm punching when I, when I hit them. Where is my crosshair? I'm literally looking like a foot above this guy. Oh, 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 that's not good. Notice where my hands are. I'm punching above him. It's not necessary. You're not necessarily going to punch on the center of your screen. You're going to punch above. You want to almost punch like on their crown chakra. Right? We want to we wanna open up their samsara. Enlighten them to the future and the present and everything that has happened. What happens if we fight... Ah, I want to get him elevated. How can I get this guy elevated? Come over here, dude. I think there's two of them. No. What happens when we fight up a hill? So I'm going to let this guy come to the high ground here. And I'm going to block looking down. What happens when we fight up the hill is I hit their chest. Even if I'm punching at their face, it hits their chest. And notice how it's taking way more hits. Taking way more hits, right? Think about those other people got knocked down three. But when I punch above their head, they get knocked out rather quickly. Oh, baby, baby. So it looks like I found a BK. And I now have ammo, so I'm going to hold R. Reload this bad boy. And now we can sort of chase gunshots. And what I mean by this is if I hear someone shooting before... Like in Electro when we very first started. Remember, I'm I'm remembering what side of the town I entered in, which was somewhere over there. And I'm headed deeper, deeper. But if I hear gunshots like I heard before, now, oh, someone's been on this path. Uh-oh. If I hear gunshots like I heard before, I can now go to them and see what's up. That doesn't mean I have to fight this person face to face. You never want to fight face to face. You never want your want the person you're shooting at to know where you are. You never want to be seen, right? We want to be invisible at all times. So if I heard shots in that tree line, I would not run a bee line across this tree line. I would watch it, find out what's going on. When it comes to gunfights, the ultimate goal of the gunfight is for you to come out alive. Because whether or not you kill seven people doesn't matter if you are dead. You cannot continue your adventure. So ultimately playing passive especially as a beginner, until you feel an abundance of confidence is the way to go. You want to play passive and you want to play, you want to only take fights where you have an advantage so ungodly at the start that you have an opportunity to end their life immediately. We're going to keep heading this way and just see... Oh, someone's building a base here. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Building a bunch of storage boxes. They got a wall up, it looks like. They're building a fence right now. Sick. Awesome. Good for them. I hope they, I hope they watch my video about it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to keep heading... Into the sun, it looks like. Deeper into the map. Now, I have a compass here. It's quite difficult for a lot of people to navigate this compass as... What the hell am I looking at here? It tells me north. What I always do, 
some of you in the chat are gonna be like, I already know how to use that compass, it's not a big deal. I don't know, so I had to figure it out, and this is what I do with it. The other one tells you which direction you're going no matter where you aim it. This one, I just use north as a guiding principle. So the red line will point me to north, I'll line it up with the end, and then I'll use that to judge, well now I'm running northwest. Now I'm running north again, now I'm running northeast, right? I try and keep that as a guiding principle as to which direction I'm heading. And in general, we want to head somewhere west and north. So I am on the right path here. No armor still, so I'm super duper vulnerable. In a bad, bad way. Okay, I should have opened this map too, just to show you guys. If you do find a map in game, you put it in your hands and you left click. It'll open that bad boy up for you. And we started in... Erect Po... Aboak. Erect Po Aboak. We spawned here. We wrestled that guy right here. We ran up this road. I told you, hey, don't do that with the cars. That's not smart. We ran up here. I said, let's get lost in the forest together. We used the trees to navigate our path through. We ran into this Nayakta. And now we are running on this road northwest. So it looks like we're going to run into Marinavabeka or something like that pretty soon here. So we're going to continue on our path. But you can use this tourist map. It doesn't show you where you are. It doesn't give you the red line. You can use it as a sort of uh, a tool to help you navigate, okay? Also, for anyone who is having trouble... Just want to check that you can't find armor in there. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's Mogoladevka. That's what we're at. For anyone who is having trouble with settings, I have a video if you filter by most, most popular on my channel. It's like in the top 10 most popular. But I have a video. Oh my goodness, I got the hiccups. Worst time to have hiccups. Come on. I have a video going over all the different settings, what they do, and with sort of like pre-designated settings for different tiers of PC. So if you feel inclined, check it out. I would link it if I knew how. I'll link it right now. Probably don't though. So here we are. All right, we're running through the woods. We saw that town there, so we're going to approach it. But something I want you to keep in mind, every time you get a little bit deeper, you get a little bit more dangerous too. It's always going to be First off, people that are this far in are going to have more loot than people that spawn on the coast. We can anticipate that. What does that mean? They're not just going to have their hands. They're probably going to have a gun. They're probably going to have ammo to that gun. And they may even have armor. So, as you move inland, all of the principles that you have to focus on as far as keeping yourself safe, they just get multiplied every step. And as we enter civilian towns we have to be cautious but even more so like 10 times more so for military towns any zone that has tents in it any place that has barracks or military buildings we have to be super cautious but right now this looks like a civilian town so although i am anticipating that someone may be ahead of me based on finding all that loot behind me i am not stressing over it in a way that i would if i knew that there were tents up here or if i knew that there was military barracks because military barracks are going to spawn military zombies which are going to spawn plate carriers which you want i want and everyone else that's playing the game wants it's also going to spawn guns hey look at you're playing a video game you want a gun so we are going to have to really watch ourselves when we get into those military zones and in the next video i think i will talk all about that so stay tuned if you're just First time viewer, first time in the channel, and you're watching this, welcome. Uh, we, we have a bunch of different ones. I highly recommend watching some of the other ones. So they touch a lot of the topics that I brush over here in depth. All right, we made it to Moggy, Mogoladevka. Looks like we got some zombie action out there. You do run faster with your hands. Uh, than a gun. So if you're ever running through a field and you're not planning on shooting anybody, you can put your gun away. You don't have to stay stressed 24-7. I 
see a little castle up there on the hillside too. So we're going to go through Mog here. And then we're going to go to that castle. See if we can find a, a sniper. Maybe an optic for a sniper. It does appear that it's getting a little dark. Oh, that sucks. Keep thinking, every time I go into a building, how long would I, would you have spent in that building compared to how long I spent? Think about that. I found zero food and zero ammo in that last one. So now I have in my mind that this one may have zero food and zero ammo as well. So I'm cruising through. I'm checking and I'm outie. And now that I found two with zero food and zero everything... I'm super checking. Like I'm 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 going through this next one extra fast. Why? I've had two that haven't <laughs> bared any fruit and I think someone's in front of me. The more time I waste willing loot in, like staring at it and hoping that it spawns there, the the more chances I'm giving myself of starving to death. So I haven't found any food here again. It's tough. Thankfully we're good on food right now, and I believe Moggy has a well by the church. Where's the church at? Oh, maybe not by the church. It's right by this. <laughs> right there. These buildings have been known to spawn uh, press best as well. So I have hunter pants here with medium insulation, but they are badly damaged. So when I repair these, their insulation is going to go up even more. So I'm going to wear these. Let's go fill up this water bottle at the well. I'm not going to do it all the way for you guys. But what you should do at this, at this well always whenever you find a well is drink until your stomach is completely full. And this is also why having a bottle is incredibly valuable to you. It's because you can fill it up, drink, and be on the move. You don't have to sit at the well, just like the cars earlier. The longer you're stagnant and not able to move, the worse it is for you. Ooh, multivitamins! So multivitamins are incredibly powerful. If you're not sick, I don't recommend using them. I always recommend holding on to him until that that sickness kicks in, and then the second it kicks in, pop, 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 pop. If you think you're going to be sick, for example, you're all your clothes are wet, you've been freezing cold, your guys devastated that you haven't got any warm clothes the entire time you've been playing, you've been playing six hours. Um, in that case, it's like you can use it sort of anticipating, and you'll get, be better at judging that the more you play. Oh, wow. So you can find fruit under trees. This is an apple tree right here. Boom. This is good. It's bad insulation, but it's covering my face where I had zero insulation previously. So even if something is bad insulation, and I wouldn't say do something for insulation if it's like bright pink and you're trying to be camouflage, right? It's not that dire. But it does help. Ooh, this Pistoshka is best insulation, baby. All right, and we continue onward. Oh no, zombie. Toshka. Okay. Someone is definitely ahead of me. Why? I didn't find anything in any of the houses there. It was pretty, pretty desolate. So I have to be super, super careful right now in the woods here. So I suspect someone to be very close in front of me. Right, and, and this is sort of like where I'm at now. It's going to probably take you guys a little bit longer to get to this point. But where I'm at now is sort of like a separating point for the beginner area and the advanced area or like the middle gear. It's kind of strange. The Cherno in particular doesn't really go from like... 
low tier gear, middle tier gear, high tier gear, super high tier gear. It kind of goes from low tier to high tier to super high tier. Like there isn't really a middle ground. So what, what often happens is as we push from this barrier right now to the next area is we come across a lot of players who are either super geared or on a similar playing field to us. And what that means is we have to be a ghost. We have to constantly be thinking more and more. As I've said just 10 minutes ago, we have to be thinking more and more. How many spots can I be seen from? Am I using proper cover? Am I in a position where if someone were to attack me, I would be stuck? All these questions that we have to ask ourselves. Now, these castles up here are going to be pretty good when it comes to getting us... Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm yellow right now, which I don't like. These castles are going to be pretty good when it comes to getting us optics and when it comes to getting us, like, hunting uh, guns. So there's a lot of blazes will spawn there. Mosins can spawn there. PU scopes can spawn there. Hunting scope can spawn there. Longhorn can spawn there. There's a lot of different, like, ranged weapons that we can end up getting from the castles. So ultimately, we always want to check them. Also, you could get press vests there. It's a, it counts as a civilian spawn. You can also get a hunter's vest, which I've been told has no ballistic protection um, or stab protection, but I think it has stab protection. I'm going to tell those people that they're wrong, even though they're probably right. Oh, look what we found. Boom. Remember that red dot is telling you where you are. You can just use that as a turning point. And now that I know that, it's that I'm by Zub, I can look on my handy dandy map in my pocket and use that as a sort of marker. I'm somewhere by Zub. Okay, I know that. Looks like there's a castle behind the two buildings here. Oh, you mother truck. I don't want to fight you guys. I don't want to fight you guys. So, I hope so far this guide has been different information. I, I really, like, people are asking for me to do another perfect start video. And I'm really trying to focus. Oh my goodness, I waited that whole goddamn time. I'm really trying to focus on getting different information in it. I don't want anyone to watch one video and watch another video and be like, well, I learned the same stuff. Of course, there's going to be, well, you need to get a knife. That's important to all of DayZ, you know. There's going to be core principles. Oh, come on, don't scream at me. There's going to be core principles that are going to sort of be redundancies. I'm going to have to explain them again just because they are incredibly valuable and I, and I want you guys to be thinking of them every time you play. A little lag there. Okay. All right. Now I I I anticipate always when I approach one of these, someone is here. So many people are dying and spawning on the coast and running inland. And if anyone sees one of these cool castles, what are they gonna do? They're gonna come here. And they are always on top of a mountain. Standing very right. So I'm going to approach with caution here. Someone's building a base here. We may even be able to find some loot. An unfinished base. here I don't see any down trees so normally if someone's building a base right now there would be like down trees here hello I'm just trying to see the top of the castle but I see you have a base here I'm not trying to intrude on your home hello are you there 
He may be here. He may shoot me in the head. Oh, he walled it off right here. So this dude built the gate, but he doesn't have a code lock yet. So he doesn't have the ability to lock it down all the way. Oh, but look at PU scope just says, as I expressed. Alright, so let's get a look on Bishnoi here. I don't see any movement down there. So we're going to go ahead and head over there. And I think this is where I'm going to call this video. Um, my next video is going to be like... Oh my god. That's actually pretty sick. You can like crouch under it. My next video is going to be how what to do after this. And I'm going to use this exact same character. Sort of like a transition video of what to do when you get off the coast. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I think that's about an hour here. I appreciate all of you guys. I hope you hope you learned something from this video in comparison to the other ones. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log off in this bush right here. When I start that next video, you're going to see this bush right here, I believe. Care about you guys. Thank you so much. All the love man has meant so much to me. I'm so happy to see so many people finding these guides useful. It's uh, been such a pleasure to see all the comments and uh, get all the love from you guys. So... Thank you so much and good luck out there, my friend.